God, good morning, good morning, good morning to all of God's people. We welcome you to the worship experience that is St. Matthew's Unison Free Will Baptist Church, the church that cares. Our pastor is Elder Kevin C. Hardy and our first lady, Minister Valerie Hardy. We welcome you to the worship experience on this Sunday, the first Sunday in December, December 6, 2020. By virtue of the fact that we've made it this far, we know that God is good and that he is greatly to be praised. I wanna call us to worship. I feel like the Psalms today because I feel a David praise. Our call to worship will be Psalm 66, verses one through five, the new King James Version. And it reads, make a joyful shout to God all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works through the greatness of your power. Hallelujah. We bless our God through the greatness of your power. Your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. And this is one of my favorite verses. Come and see the works of God. He is awesome in his doing towards the son of men. Glory to God. I'm going to ask that you join me for a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor for this is the day that the Lord has made. We have an opportunity to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for keeping us from danger seen and unseen. Father, we thank you because the unseen indicates we just don't know how much you've kept us from. But we give you glory. We give you honor. Because when we don't see, you see. We thank you for being omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent, the almighty God. Now, Father, we commit this service to your hands. We ask you to have your way. Do what you will. You know the petitions that are on our hearts. You know the needs of our, our deepest needs, God. And we thank you because the answer will be found in the word. We give you glory and we give you honor. And everyone that agrees with that prayer says, amen. Glory to God. We want to remind you that this is the first Sunday. This is our communion Sunday. And we're going to ask that you make certain that you have something that's symbolic of the communion for you to partake in this morning. Because the Bible didn't say what it needed to be, but it did say, as often as you do this, you do show forth my death until I come. Glory to God. So the fact that we're participating in the communion indicates that we're looking, we're anticipating the arrival of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to share with you for our scripture reading this morning, a psalm that I fell in love with again. I told you I felt the David praise this morning because God is good and we just don't realize how good. As I've already said, when we praise him for the things we see, there are so many things we don't that he's just working on in the background and we give him glory for it. Our scripture today, Psalm 30, again, from the New King James Version. And it reads, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. 
Glory to God. I read in your hearing Psalm 30, verses 1 through 5. Let's just take a moment to give God thanks. The scripture I just read talks about at his remembrance. So even your memory is a blessing. The Bible says the memory of the just is blessed. So when you just remember what he's done before, it gives you the strength and the faith for what you anticipate him doing in the future. Glory to God. At this time, we're getting ready to go into praise and worship. We're going to have praise and worship. We're going to be ushered into the presence of God by none other than our first lady, Sister Valerie Hardy. Sister Hardy, First Lady Hardy, it's in your hands. Amen and amen. So good to be with you this morning on this first Sunday in December. And it is, I believe, an Advent Sunday, or we're coming into that season of Advent where we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we know that we have in our tradition many hymns that glorify and demonstrate the beauty and the majesty of the birth of Jesus Christ. And I wanted to come to you this morning with one of those hymns just to usher us into that season and into the presence of Lord, because I am so glad and so thankful that we have a savior, hallelujah to Jesus, that came and left his throne in glory to come and to put on flesh clothes, that he would be compassionate to our um, woes and the things that get us down. And he came- Israel, really came to take our sins, hallelujah to Jesus, as his own and gave us righteousness. So we're going to glorify him with this hymn. Hallelujah. Oh, come. Oh, come. Amen. Well, and ransom so, so it was used as a base for this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hallelujah sometimes you know what we need to begin again we need to do over and i'm Amen. just admonish you and just remind everyone to mute your devices so that we can have a pleasant worship experience so that there won't be any interruption, amen, because we wanna experience the Lord together as much as we can. I know we're in our respective places, but right now you're in the sanctuary, amen. And in the sanctuary, we wouldn't be- Good to be there. And they say, no, the worst I said to multitask on God. He deserves our full attention. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And ransom captive is Rael, mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. That mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. 
child's will. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Lady Hardy. The name Emmanuel simply means God with us. And every time it's repeated in that hymn, it's, remi it's reminding us that they're calling on the Lord. And one of my favorite parts of that, of that hymn is that it ransomed captive Israel. Hallelujah. Glory to God. At this time, we're going to have greetings from our pastor, none other than Elder Kevin C. Hardy. It's in your hands, Pastor. Good morning to you and praise the Lord. I'm going to be brief, but uh, it brings me great joy to make these few announcements to you this morning. And first of all, I want to thank the Lord because tomorrow, December 7th, marks six years that God has uh, graced amen, me to amen. be pastor of St. Matthew's Church. Whoop, whoop. Thank, thank Matthew's Church for the time that you have allowed me to become your pastor. December 7th, 2014, I became or was installed as the pastor, but it takes these years for me to become your pastor. And I thank God for all of your prayers and for all of your support and for all of your love. And I really feel like the Lord has continued during the years to knit us together. And I thank you so, so, so very much for how you have held me up and my family up. So yeah. we are celebrating together St. Matthews for six years of the Lord's goodness for it is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. I also want to acknowledge Last week, we had a drive-by thank you where First Lady and I wanted to share some gifts uh, with you just as a token of thank you for all of your love and all of your support to us. And some of you were able to get there during that time and some of you were not. And if you were not able to get there during that time, we still have those for you. And you can this week on Monday, Brother Quinn is there, I believe, from nine to one. So if you would like to stop by and get your thank you gift, you can, or you can call the office on Wednesday between 10 and two and set a time to pick it up because trustee Irma Smith is there. But we want you to know that you still have an opportunity to get that. And First Lady and I want you to get uh, that gift from us because we truly, truly, truly appreciate you. Again, by way of next weekend, next Saturday is our second annual Man, Man Cave Conference, and it will be virtual this year from the time of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We have some wonderful speakers for you that you'll hear more about during the announcements, but we ask you men to please mark your calendars and be a part of this momentous day. And on the Sunday following, on Sunday, December 13th, will be our annual Men's Day. And in honor of that, we are going to have a very special preacher with us. I am very proud to say that we are going to have our bishop and the former pastor of St. Matthew's, our father in the gospel. We celebrate the fact that we will welcome Bishop Robert James Gay as our preacher for our annual Men's Day. So he will be here. It will be uh, Zoom only. So it will be a virtual service only because uh, Bishop Gay will be our speaker. But we're also very proud and happy to have for our musical selections. We're going to have Brother Charles Chucky Brown with us, and he is going to be uh, singing for us on that Sunday. So we have some special things planned. So we ask men that you will just prepare yourself for Saturday and Sunday. And then on Sunday, ladies, you are invited to celebrate us as well. You can't come Woo! to the Man Cave Conference, but you can <laughs> come and celebrate us on Sunday. Amen. But again, we thank you so much for six uh, years. And as I said, when I was first uh, installed, I said, and I say the same, that we are going to make it. With Jesus on our side, things will work out fine. We're going to make it. And now it's back into the hands of our worship leader, Elder Clayton. God bless you. Amen. We are very, very excited 
for the man cave coming up. Even though we can't come, Pastor, we can celebrate with you the fact that it's going to be a success. And we look forward to hearing from our bishop on that Sunday as well. At this time, we're going to have our announcements. Uh, Sister Cisa, am I turning this over to you? Yes, greetings everyone. Bless you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Our announcements today will be facilitated by myself as well as Sister Corinne Hardy. In your hands, Sister Corinne. Good morning, everyone. Here are today's announcements. Happy birthday uh, from your church family and friends to Sister Brenda Jeter on December 1st, Trustee Nero Lee Jr. Uh, December 6th today, Sister Mabel Carroll, December 6th, Sister Margaret Burney, December 6th, and Master Kevin J. Hardy on December 6th. <laughs> My baby. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And Sister Joyce, Joy Quixie on December the 7th. Sister Doris Lee on December the 10th. Trustee Andrea Jackson Brooks, December the 11th. Brother Michael Beeman, December the 11th. And Sister Destiny Crockett on December 11th as well. And also happy 26th wedding anniversary to Brother William and Sister Cynthia Griffin on 12-3. So Amen. Happy birthday to all and happy anniversary as Amen. well. Amen. Amen. Um, now it's uh, time to uh, read the sick and shut in. Um, Mother Janie L. Bradley, Minister Bessie Bird, Sister Nadine, Sister May Ford, Sister Ann Galman, Sister M Mammy Grinnan, Sister Minnie Harris, Sister Sadie Holly, Trustee Andrea Jackson Brooks, Sister Brenda Jeter, Sister Mary Johnson, Sister Marie Jones, Sister Hattie, Hattie Kelly, Brother Jimmy McCoy, Sister Eunice Mayo, Sister Lucinda Neverson, Sister Willie Francis Payne, Deacon Eloise Pope, Sister Patricia Miller uh, Richardson, Sister Rebecca Seaborn, Brother Gregory Thickpin, Sister Christine Washington and Sister Frances Younger. And if you would like to reach out to any of these members of the church, you can call or email the church office to request um, their address and tell or telephone number or telephone number. Um, I think we're gonna pass it to uh, Elder uh, Cisa. Here. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Corinne, so much. We are celebrating. So tomorrow, as we have stated, we are celebrating our pastor's official six years of service. We celebrate our pastor, none other than Elder Kevin C. Hardy, again, for six years of phenomenal servant leadership. And today is Sunday, December 7th, and we just want to love on him and thank God for a man after his own heart. So let's take a few moments in the chat and let's celebrate our leader. Let's celebrate our man of God, the shepherd that the Lord has placed over us, none other than our pastor, Elder Kevin C. Hardy. Let's celebrate him. Happy, happy, happy six years of pastoring service to us. Pastor, we love you. We appreciate you and we celebrate you and we congratulate you for a job well done. We will continue to allow the Lord to bless us in this great year of service as the Lord is pivoting us to another stage of our lives post-pandemic. We thank you and we will continue to follow you as you follow Christ. We love you once again. Let's celebrate our pastor, Elder Kevin C. Hardy with the hearty happy, happy anniversary. First Lady, we love you. And to the Hardy family, thank you, thank you, thank you for your years of dedication and your service for everything that you do to contribute to our phenomenal church, the Church That Cares. Happy anniversary. 
And as Pastor noted, we are celebrating Man Cave 2020. Next week, we are certainly excited for the Man Cave Conference. It will be a men's weekend that you do not want to miss. This is, once again, a virtual experience via Zoom right here. The theme is leadership as a lifestyle. So please, all men, please grab your brothers, your bros, your friends, your colleagues, your cousins, your community, your constituency to grab a hold to what the Lord is speaking into the lives of our men through our pastor with leadership as a lifestyle. Again, that is via Zoom on Saturday, December 12th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m excuse me, until 2 p.m., we have a special musical guest right here, none other than Stefan Hawkins, the professor. So we are looking forward to being here to celebrate the Lord, men. Make sure you're here. Cade, we have committed, accountable, versatile, and empowered. So to register, please get details um, via Zoom, Sister Sharon Forbes, Sister Latricia Bromel, Sister Lynette Secret Johnson, or call the church at 2 0-3-7-7-7-0-4-7-2, or via ebright.com and you can search man cave conference 2020 we have a list of panelists here so please 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 men grab all the men you can and be here for leadership as a lifestyle man cave conference 2020 we have a video to show you just for your hearing and your viewing so please stay tuned to man cave 2020 video coming next Meanwhile, Americans are being warned of an ugly winter full with illness and death. The country saw one million new cases in COVID in just a full. to record the first five million cases. Spread of virus by Christmas. Okay, Michael, briefly. ...a place that would actually reverse these numbers. Thanks, Reed. Well, the, the idea... Amen. Once again, please, please make sure you're here all men next Saturday from 10 a.m. until 2, 2 p.m. for Man Cave 2020 Conference. It is here just for you. On Sunday, as Pastor noted, we have, again, the Men's Weekend. Men's Day will be here on Sunday, December 13th, 2020. At 10 a.m., we have our very own Bishop, Bishop Robert J. Gay, with us as our guest preacher. We also have musical guest, Brother Charles, uh, officially known as Chucky Brown. So, men, 
please make sure you're here. We can eavesdrop, ladies, on Sunday morning for our Sunday morning service. But I need you to grab all your men and let's make this Man Cave Conference 2021 that you do not want to miss. We are excited, excited, excited. Um, again, by a virtue of announcements, please let's continue to pray for our dear Deacon Philip Bryant. His mother is passed. A funeral is for family only, and it will be live streamed via Zoom. So please let's pray for the Bryant family. Also, uh, Sister Tanya Jeter lost her husband, and it's also the uncle of Sister Jeanette Foster. Uh, funeral services will be held on Thursday, that is December 10th, 2020, a walkthrough funeral at the funeral home from 10 to 11 a.m., that is for the viewing, in a graveside service at Beaverdale Memorial Park at 11.30 a.m. Again, please let's call our bereaved loved ones, and let's continue to support and pray for them as the Lord promised to heal and comfort those that mourn. So please, let's govern ourselves accordingly to all announcements. Sister Corinne, in your hands for the last two slides, and we are excited once again for what the Lord is doing in and through our lives. God bless you. Thank you, Elder Cisa. Um, to stay informed about all these upcoming events and happenings, you can donate to various initiatives by checking St. Matthew's UFWB Church website at www.stmatthewsufwbchurch.com or search or in, you can go to Facebook and search for St. Matthew's UFWB Church or call St. Matthew's UFWB Church at uh, 203. Uh, wait, I can't see the number. 777-0472 and Wednesdays 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And it's back in the hand. Oh, there are three ways to give. There's cash app, uh, dollar sign, S-M-U-F-W-B church. There's PayPal, www.paypal.me slash S-M church offering. Sunday service mail drop off, St. Matthew's UFWB Church, 400 Dixwell Avenue, New Haven, Connecticut. Debit or credit is accepted. Call either trustee Erica Bradley or trustee Juanita Mazik. And thank you for your generosity. So now I believe it is back in the hands of the worship leader. Amen. We thank you very much for governing yourselves accordingly with the announcements and we thank you for being liberal givers. Um, we want to now shift the service into the spoken word. We're going to be blessed by a sermonic solo from First Lady Hardy. And then we are going to be led further into the word of God. We are celebrating our pastor's sixth anniversary, but we're also celebrating a yielded man of God who stays before the Lord to give us fresh rhema, and we sincerely appreciate it. So First Lady, after you have ministered to us, the next voice out of the scriptures we will hear is none other than our pastor, Elder Kevin C. Hardy. Take it away, First Lady. Okay. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, I thank God for being able to come before you once again, and I pray that it will be a blessing to you. And this next song uh, that I want to sing is, is a very familiar uh, Christmas um, hymn that we hear all the time, but I want to read the scripture first that this hymn is based on. And though we relegate this hymn to Christmas, this is a real, really a hymn of the saints that we are to sing all the time and we are going to be singing it in eternity. And it's from Revelation chapter five, verse 11 through 14. Then I looked and I heard the voices of myriads of angels in circles around the throne, as well as the voices of the living creatures and the elders, myriads and myriads, and as I watched, all of them were singing with, with thunderous voices. 
Worthy is Christ the lamb who was slaughtered to receive great power and might, wealth and wisdom and honor, glory and praise. Then every living being joined the angelic choir, every creature in heaven and on earth, under the earth, in the sea and everything in them were worshiping with one voice saying, praise, honor, glory and dominion be to God enthroned and to Christ the lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures responded, amen. And the 24 elders threw themselves face down to the ground and worship. Church, worship the Lord right where you are. And I pray this song brings you into the presence, further into the presence of the Lord as we prepare for the word of God. Amen. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. For he alone is worthy. Oh, he alone is worthy. Oh, he alone is worthy. Christ the Lord. And all the saints and angels bow before the throne. And all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing. And all the saints and angels bow before the throne. And all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Yeah. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. And from you are all things. And for you are all things. You deserve the glory. Yeah. And all the saints and angels bow before his throne. And all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing. Hey, hey, and all the saints and angels, they bow before his throne. And all the elders cast their crowns before the You're worthy of it all. 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 You
Glory to your name, O oh Lord. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We are reminded and we thank you for your goodness. You deserve it all. Let us pray before we get into the scripture. Father in heaven, we thank you for the preaching moment. And we thank you and we praise you that this is the season that we celebrate your birth, your coming into the flesh for the forgiveness of our sins. I ask God that you would anoint me to preach your word with clarity, conviction, and with power, without limitation or distraction. Use me for your glory and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. All right. We are going to go to Luke chapter one, and we are going to read the following verses, verses 26 through 38. Luke chapter one, verses 26 through 38. Many of you are familiar with this story. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying 
and considered what manner of greeting was this. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I want to lift this morning at the beginning of our Advent season. I want to lift the word. Don't forget your chosen. Amen. Don't forget your chosen. We are now in the season of Advent, the time before the coming of the birth of Christ. And as we begin this season, we look today of Luke's details of two important conversations in chapter one. First, the angel Gabriel talks to a man named Zacharias and tells him, your prayers have been heard. There is something about knowing that God has heard your prayers oh, yes, yes. and is answering them. He told him that they will have a son, although they are advanced in age. He and his wife, Elizabeth, would be parents of who we would know as John the Baptist. And as we move down to today's text, God sends a Gabriel once again, this time to Mary, the mother of Jesus, who is Elizabeth's cousin, to have a conversation. And that conversation encouraged me. And it showed me that God first was talking to Zacharias and Elizabeth, and then he moved to talk to Mary's cousin, I'm, I'm sorry, Elizabeth's cousin, Mary. And it showed me that God is moving in families, oh, yes. changing things in families, Thank you, Lord. and the word can find them. I'm thankful for every time the word found me, even when I wasn't looking for it. The word is moving through families, and I declare today that he is moving through your family. I declare that God is changing some things in families. He's using families. Elizabeth and Mary weren't even in the same room or the same space, but God knew what each member needed to hear. So I'm saying to you this morning that whatever your family members need to hear, God is going to tell them what they need to hear for their life to be changed. God is moving through families. Some are stressing, but God knows what the members of your family need to hear. Some are dealing with some tough times, but God is moving and is telling them what they need to hear. He is sending his word and he's moving through your family. You, I Jesus. declare and I decree that God is moving and he is sending his word to your family members to give them what you need. God is concerned about families and his word is changing things. Elizabeth didn't know what Mary was going through. Mary didn't know until the angel told her what Elizabeth was going through through. But when they came together, there was a revelation. Amen. And I declare to you that when you come together with that family member, there shall be a revelation. You're going to know that God moved for them and God moved for you and God moved for Amen. them. There will be a revelation happening because God is doing an inside work for an outside revelation. You need to write that down. God is doing an inside work for an outside revelation. Yes. God is moving in my family doing 
tongue and inside work. Claim it for yourself for an outside revelation and we shall see the works of the Lord. And it is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. He is showing up and showing out in families. If you believe that, type that in the chat that God is working in my family. I declare it. I believe it. I receive it. God is working in my family. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He's doing an inside work for an outside revelation in our families. Glory be to God. As we begin to unpack this text and we look at verse 27, it said that Mary was betrothed to Joseph, which is a fancy word for meaning engaged. And back then, the engagements were a year long before the marriage, and it was a binding contract, a binding engagement. These contracts had to be signed because they were official. They were not hooking up. They were hooked up. All right. Yes. They were not yes. hooking up. On, they were yes. hooked up. Yes, sir. This shows that while they were waiting, God talks to his people while they're waiting for something to happen. Joseph was waiting. Mary was waiting. The parents were waiting. And look who's talking. Jesus was talking. The God was talking. His spirit was talking. So sometimes I'm speaking to some people now who are connected but waiting like Mary and Joseph. They were promised, but they were waiting. They were hoping and trusting, but they were waiting. They were trying to do the right thing and they were waiting, yes, but God yes. started talking. I thank God that he sends a word while we wait because he knows how vulnerable we can be if we don't have a word while we wait. My God. So why did you tune in today? Why did you tune in any other Sunday? Because you needed a word while you wait. God knows what you need while you wait. And it is the word that undergirds us that while we are waiting, we have a word. Yeah. He doesn't want us wor worn out while we're waiting. He doesn't want us washed up while we're waiting. He doesn't even want us worrying while we wait. Yes, yes. And this is revelation just really blessed my heart. He doesn't even want us to feel ordinary. So remember what my title was, Don't Forget You're Chosen. He doesn't want us to feel ordinary while we're waiting. Our circumstances may be ordinary. Our routine might be ordinary, uh -huh. but we are not ordinary. God uses ordinary moments to do extraordinary things Thank because you. I'm chosen. Thank Let you. me show you in the text. Repeat after me. Don't forget I'm chosen. Don't forget I'm chosen. Verse 28 says, the angel says to her, rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you. Here the word favor means chosen. Notice that God did not say picked. He said chosen. So he had me this morning look at the difference between what it means to be picked and chosen. Picked is superficial. Picked is something that changes from day to day. When I was a kid on the playground, sometimes one team would pick me, sometimes they wouldn't. Pick means that I can wear a suit today and then pick jeans tomorrow and corduroys on Wednesday and maybe shorts on Thursday. But depending on my mood, that's what picked means. There's no lasting tie or relationship. I picked a girlfriend, but I chose a wife. Right, Somebody yeah. needs All to right. understand All the right. difference Come between. On. And some of you need to stop being picked and start being chosen. Right. You don't need to Come wait on. for somebody to pick you. Yeah. You need somebody to choose you. Ha, choose means a long-term commitment. There's no change in thee. That's what God said that he did for us. The relationship is that his faithfulness. There is no turning. Yes. He is consistent. Yes. He is stable. Uh -huh. His commitment yes, is strong. 
because he chose you. The Bible says you did not choose me. I chose you from the foundation of the world that you would have fruit and that fruit will remain. I am a chosen generation, not a pink generation. I'm a chosen generation. You need to see who I am. You need to walk like you're chosen. You need to talk like you're chosen. You need to believe like you're chosen. In this season, before 2020 goes out, no matter what you went through, realize I'm chosen. I'm an overcomer by the Lamb of God. I overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony, which says I'm chosen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I'm not picked. My God, I'm chosen. He didn't change his mind from day to day. I'm chosen. Yes, sir. My, 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 my. He chose his children. Mm -hmm. He affirmed our identity yes, he as did. his own. And it does not change depending on the mood of people. I'm still chosen. Let people pick apples and oranges and grapes. I'm chosen. Get out of the picked column. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. stay in the chosen all column. All right, all right. Come on. My, 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 my. Yes, sir. Verse 29 and 30. We see another powerful lesson. But repeat after me because this is good to me. Don't forget I'm chosen. Don't forget I'm chosen. Now you're talking to yourself. Don't forget I'm chosen. Don't forget I'm chosen. Yes, you are. Verse 29 and 30, it says, trouble and fear sometimes come to snatch the word soon after it's given. What happens is we hear a word sometimes and after we hear the word, we receive it with gladness. Mm -hmm. And after that, the enemy wants to snatch it out so that we don't feel as strong once we leave. Look at the text here. The text says Mary was troubled and afraid after Gabriel gives her the word. But God says again in that next verse, fear not, you have found favor. Favor here not only means chosen, but he adds to it, I love the Lord for this. I'm not only chosen, but I have grace to overcome. That's what it means. Chosen with grace to overcome. Chosen with grace to make it through. That's what he was telling Mary. So God repeated himself to make a point, to reinforce the faith that he meant what he said the first time. Aren't you glad that God is not afraid to repeat himself for Thank your you sake? Lord. Thank because you, he understands that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come. I repeat myself because I have come. I repeat myself because I meant what I said. It shall come to pass. He's not going to let fear or trouble rob you of what he said to you. Hallelujah. Glory be to Thank God. You, he said, I will make it good. Hallelujah. It's personal. I thank him for all the times he reminded me that he confirmed his word, that he reassured me when I started getting a little shaky after I heard it, I received it. But then God had the nerve, even if it was an hour later, to repeat himself. Yeah, I said it. Yes, I meant it. And I said it to you. Because sometimes we hear it, but you're like, does he mean me? He means you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, fear not, Mary, you're chosen and you have the grace to make it through, the grace to overcome. And with that verse, what the Lord showed me was that the chosen of God have a reinforcement plan. I'm a roller coaster rider. Uh -huh. And I know everybody here is not, mm -mm, nope. but I'm a roller coaster rider. So even if you're not, you can get what I'm saying. But when I would ride a roller coaster, I would get in and sit down and there would be an overhead harness that would come over my head and come down and fit between my shoulders and my arms, underneath my arms. And then there would be a lap belt or something that would come up to secure me with my legs. 
So once I get on there and the overhead harness comes down and locks and then the seat belt comes, and then there's a place for me to hold on to. But I don't get in there believing that my confidence goes in my ability to hold on. Uh -oh. <laughs> I get in there with the confidence that that is equipped to hold me. There is a place for me to hold on, uh -huh. but I'm not responsible for keeping myself in that position. Uh -huh. So what he told me with that is just like a roller coaster, life has ups and downs and sharp turns and valleys and speedy movements. And sometimes we can get shaken in the midst of doing it. And sometimes our hands can even become shaken or loose. Uh -huh. But even when my hands become shaky, and my life becomes shaky, he still got me because he is the reinforcement yes. that holds me in place in the midst of life's twists and turns yes, because sir. the chosen people have a reinforcement plan. So despite the fact that I should hold on, even when I can't hold on, my God God's said, I'm God. not going to let you go. That's what he was saying to Mary. I know it's shaky yes. now. I know it's unbelievable. Yes, I know what I told you seems impossible, uh -huh. but I'm not going to let you let go because I'm going to hold you in the place of your destiny. I'm going to hold you till you do what I told you to do. I'm going to hold you till everything you were created for comes to pass because there's a replay. Oh my, a reinforcement plan that's going to hold me together. I need you to put your hand on yourself and say, God's got me. There's been some things that have been trying to shake me. Some Fast twists and so turns, so but fast. God's got me. Yes, he He's does. got me secure. Yes, Even does. when I can't hold on. My I know God. the song said hold to God's unchanging hand but even though that's a song there's a lot more scriptures that say now unto him who is able to keep me from falling he will not lose his grip on me and that no devil in hell could snatch me out of hell. it's important that I try to hold on to him but he said even when you came I got you put your hand on yourself chosen people and say God's got me God's got me Mm, 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 mm. God's got me God through the ups me. and downs. God's got me through the hills and valleys. God's got me against the swift turns of life. God's got me when I'm shaken up. Yes, God's God. got me when I don't understand. Yes, God's God. got me when I'm upset. God's got me when I'm confused. God's got me when I'm stressed. God's got me. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Woo! God, Hallelujah. thank you. He will not lose his grip. Not lose his grip. Not lose his grip. No, Lord, no, Lord. Not lose his grip. I know you feel like that's the thing with a roller coaster. You feel like you're going to fall out. But the reinforcement <laughs> was prepared for the shaking. He's prepared for what you might go through. And he's going to bring you out. And guess what? He's going to bring you out all right. Yes, he God is, is yes, going to cover is. you and protect you and preserve you. How do I know? He said, I am able to keep that which is committed to me until the day of Jesus Christ and the chosen are committed to him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My, 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 my. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Put your hand on yourself. And I need you to say two declarations. Say, don't forget I'm chosen. Don't forget I'm chosen. You're telling you. All right, thou, don't forget you're chosen. Don't forget you're chosen. And then next say, God's got me. God's got me. I got a reinforcement plan. I got a reinforcement You know, aren't you glad somebody needs to wave their hand in our virtual audience and be glad that you don't have to keep yourself? Thank you, Lord. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Then moving down to verse 34. It builds on this idea. Some of us chosen folk still have questions. Mary says in verse 34, how, Lord? When, Lord? <laughs> Why, Lord? Mm -hmm. Her question was, Lord, how can this be? And some of us are dealing with some questions. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to type them in the chat. You don't have to do any of that. We got questions about how it's going to happen. 
Mary had questions and she was chosen. So sometimes the chosen folk got questions. Yes. God is not intimidated because I got a question. Hallelujah. Because he got answers yes, he does. to all the questions. So she said, Lord, how can this be when I know not a man? And God answers and says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and overshadow you. God reminded me of a story that I knew about a man who was new to construction. It was going to be his first day on the job. And he called his supervisor when he was supposed to show up at the work site. And he said, sir, it's my first day. What should I bring? And he said, you just bring a piece of wood. And he said, a piece of wood? Okay. It don't make no sense. I, 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 don't, I don't understand, but, you know, okay. So he got a piece of wood. He showed up at the work site, six o'clock that morning. And he saw his, his supervisor get out of the car with a saw, a hammer, some nails, a screwdriver, and a drill. And the man said, confused, you told me to just bring a piece of wood. He said, yes, we're all set. He said, what? How can we be all set? And the supervisor said, I told you to bring the substance because I got the tools. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So, somebody needs to see what I'm trying to say. What God is saying, what he told Mary is all I need you to do is bring the substance. I got the tools. Don't worry about the how. You just bring me the substance. Well, you're saying, Pastor, what is the substance? Uh -huh. I got to go to Hebrews 11 and tell you. Uh -huh. It said faith. Uh -huh. <laughs> so cool. yeah. Faith is the substance yes, of is. things hoped for and the evidence uh -huh. of things not yes, seen. Yes, you God. gotta just bring the substance. Yes, God, God said, I got the tools. If you got the substance, uh -huh. I can make it work. All you gotta yes. do is bring the substance to the site. If you bring the substance to the site, I got the tools to make it work. Mary, all you need to do is believe. With God, nothing is impossible. Bring your substance uh -huh. to God and watch his tools work. That man, watch that saw go. Watch that hammer go. Watch that drill go. And watch him make something out of something that you yeah, didn't think could happen. Yeah. God said, bring the substance. Why can you bring the substance and God bring the tools? Because you're chosen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It don't have to make no sense to nobody else. I just got to bring the substance. Oh so I'm determined God. before 2020 goes out, I'm going to bring my faith and let him bring the tools. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Make it work, God. Make it work. Make it work. It's the faith. Verse 37 says, for God, nothing is impossible because he's got the tools and he involves me just to bring the substance. And guess what? Just like that man just brought a piece of wood, all you gotta do is bring your mustard seed. That substance mm -hmm. with God's tools produces the impossible. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You just gotta bring your substance and let God use his tools. Oh, my goodness. I hope you're getting it. You, Put your hand on yourself and say, don't forget I'm chosen. Don't forget I'm chosen. God's got me. God's got me. God knows what your faith needs to hear. Oh, my God. And what your faith needs to hear is that with God, nothing is impossible. So that's going to make your substance stand up. It's going to make your substance be revived. It's going to make your substance strengthen. It's going to make your substance grow. Bring your substance to God because he's got the tools. Mm -hmm. This last thing I want to teach to you and just bring this because Mary, as we close with chapter 30, I'm sorry, with verse 38, we have to retain our humility when we are chosen. We have to yes, retain yes, yes. our humility when we are chosen. Yes, Father. I need you to get that. Look at verse 38. 
it says, Mary said, let it be unto me according to your word. What God does is he chooses you and plans to use you. And all he needs you to do besides your substance is to remain humble. Because what humility does, thank you, Lord. This was what he, he shared with my spirit. Humility puts a magnifying glass on God. You know what a magnifying glass does? Yeah. It makes what is under the magnifying glass become larger, becomes yeah. bigger. Because you understand that the magnification belongs to God. So what humility does, so what Mary said was, your servant says, as you said, let it be unto me. So she is reflecting the right thing, God. The Bible says this, watch this. Let your light shine so that men will see your good works and magnify or glorify your father in heaven. Humility opens the door for God to be magnified Thank you, because Lord. one has to decrease. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that another will increase. So we have to, as chosen people, yes, have our confidence and our pride. And yes, we have to walk as though we know that God is going to do it. But we know where our help comes from because God wants in all of this and his choosing you. He wants to have somebody he can trust to magnify him. Yes, sir. My it's God. all about him being magnified. David said it this way. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. With me. And let us exalt his name together. Mary at the end, further down, I believe in verse 46, she says, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Oh, yes, it does. And my spirit uh -huh. rejoices in God, my Savior. Uh -huh, uh -huh. God wants to be magnified. He chooses you to magnify him. He could have chosen anybody. That's why it says if you don't praise him. The rocks will, because somebody's got to magnify God. So I wonder if there's any chosen people that said, I will bless God. I will glorify him. I will magnify him. I will make him bigger. My soul will make her boast in the Lord, the humble that shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the oh, Lord yes, with oh, me. Yes, oh, yes. oh, magnify the oh, Lord yeah, with me. Yeah. Oh, magnify yeah. the Lord with me. Me. He has kept me. He has healed me. He has delivered me. He has transformed me. He has changed me. He has done the impossible. God has chosen me. He said, I have chosen you. God be magnified. Give him glory and magnify him because he's got you in the midst of this season. And he chose you. Yes, he did. He chose you. He chose us. Magnify him. Because his goodness has been made manifest in Hallelujah. our lives. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm going to pray. And then we're going to go to communion. But I need to tell you today. Don't forget that's what Mary in this text would tell me to tell you, don't forget you're chosen. He's working in your family. God wants you to know you are not picked. You were chosen. It's not superficial. It's not going to change from day to day. It's not something that goes by his mood. He is eternally faithful to his people in spite of what we do god is committed hallelujah the bible says his truth endures to all generations he keeps his covenant to a thousand generations yeah. god is not slack according to his promise if he said it he'll do it he's not a man that he would lie he gives seed to the sower i'm here because god is faithful i'm alive because god is faithful yeah. my mind is still intact because god is faithful i'm alive during a pandemic because god has not forsaken me hallelujah. i'm here and i'm walking and i'm talking and i'm believing and I'm confessing yes, because sir. God yes. has chosen me. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And not govern himself among his emotions, but he has been consistent like yes, none sir. other. Father, he changeth you. not. Great is his faithfulness. Yes, it is because of the Lord's mercies that I'm not consumed. He has given me Jesus. grace that has reinforced my position and kept me during the shakes and the turns and the speedy things of life and my even God. the unexpected. And when I had questions, he told me to bring my substance and he has the tools and he'll make something good. You my know, it God. wasn't the bread and it wasn't the fish. It was the faith that my made God. it more than enough. Let's God said, if you got start. the faith, I'll make it good. Jesus. If you got the faith, I'll make it enough. If you got the faith, I'll heal you. Yes, if you got the faith, I'll deliver yes, you. Yes. Bring your substance. I've got the tools. Hallelujah. Jesus, I thank you. And it's just up to us to be humble and to remain humble because that he might be magnified. Because the glory belongs to him. There's a wonderful song that says, all the glory belongs to him. All the glory belongs to him. All the glory belongs to you, oh Lord. Yes. And the older saints will remember a song that says, oh magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna. Hosanna. Some of you know, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Yes, sir. Hosanna. Mm -hmm. Hosanna. Yes, sir. Blessed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I need you to just get a memory. Blessed be the rock. He's the one that was unmovable. He's the one that stayed closer than a brother. He's the one that you could tell your secret suit. He's the one who knows all about you, who picked you up and cleaned you off when you fell. He's the one who said the righteous may fall seven times, but they utterly will not be cast down. He's the one who forgave you. He's the one who wiped your midnight tears. He's the one who kept your mind when you were halfway to the crazy house. He's the one who didn't let stress overwhelm you or anxiety or bad news, but he gave you good news. And the good news is that he's the keeper of what he said. He is the redeemer of my soul. He is the one who knows. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm chosen. Despite what my journey was, I'm chosen by him. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Chosen by God. Chosen by God. Chosen by him. Hallelujah. Chosen. And I need to let you know, because some of you feel forsaken, but I need to let you know that you're going to make it because God is with you. He is with the chosen. And if God is for you. My, 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 my. He's for you, chosen. Put your hand on yourself and say, God is for me. God is for me because I'm chosen. God is for me because I'm chosen. God is for me. So we magnify you today, God. I'm going to pray and then we're going to call for Deacon Ellison so that we can have communion. Father, I thank you for reminding us of who we are in you. Mm -hmm. I thank you for reminding us of the rich identity that we have in you. We are a chosen people. Mm -hmm. We are a part of your covenant. We are your covenant chosen. Mm -hmm. And because of that, oh God, we have benefits. Thank you for all that you do for us. Mm -hmm. We promise to magnify you. And we thank you for moving throughout our families and for manifesting to us all the more that as we bring you the substance of our faith, that with you, nothing is impossible. So we hold to our confession of faith, knowing that he who promised is faithful. So I speak to all those under the sound of my voice even now, or those who will hear via YouTube. I speak healing to you now. I speak healing to bodies, by the power of God, whatever the ailment, whatever the symptom, I magnify you as the God who heals all manner of sickness and disease. I exalt you as Jehovah Jireh. I exalt you as Jehovah Rapha. I exalt you as the God 
who healeth us. And I speak to mental situations and oppressions and, and depression and frustrations and stresses. Now in the name of Jesus, I speak to circumstances and situations that feel like roadblocks. I thank you for lifting us above it. I thank you for moving them. I thank you for turning them. I thank you for opening up a highway in the middle of the waters. I thank you for sending water and refreshing and restoration in the middle of dry places. Yes. because we are chosen and not forsaken. I need you to hashtag that. We are chosen and not forsaken. Yes. We are chosen and not forsaken. And I decree it in Jesus' name. Jesus. Healing be yours now in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Come on, Deacon Ellison. Amen. If you can bless God right where you are, magnify him, chosen yes. people of God. Yes. Magnify, the Lord. Lord. magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm like David. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify him with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. I'm a living witness that if God be for you, no man can be against you. I thank God for that pastor's word because it's fulfilling in my soul. Heavenly Father, I come to you first, ask you to forgive me of my sins and allow me to stand in the gap for these our children. As we partake communion in this holy supplement, we ask you to remember each and every one under the sound of my voice, and we're doing this in remembrance of you. We thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for your sweet spirit that abide, that allowed us another 30 days, hallelujah, protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you, Father. We ask you to remember the sick and afflicted, Lord Jesus. We ask you to remember the bereaved family. We ask you this in the name of the Father, Son, and the precious Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. I would ask you now to get your cup as I go over the confession. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. According to your word in 1 John 1 and 9, creating us a clean heart and renew the right spirit in us. According to your word in Psalms 51 and 10, we count it done and thank you for a complete work in our lives that we may be more like your son. This we ask in the name of Jesus, amen. Now I ask you to take the bread, representing the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take it, eat all of it. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we're gonna take the wine, the juice, representing the blood of Jesus that died on Calvary for our sins. Take it, drink all of it. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Emmanuel, back in the hands of our pastor, Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are nourished because we have remembered what the Lord has done. Amen. And we have symbolically taken his body and his blood that we are strengthened and nourished in the faith of God and in the power of God. Amen. I pray that you were encouraged 
by today's service, every part of it. We want to thank our worship leader. We want to thank everyone who participated. We want to thank First Lady for the selections, and we want to thank her for the worship, and we thank God for the word. And I need you to remember and to remind yourself this week that we are chosen and that God has us. I want to thank God for you, and I bless God for you again just for being so faithful to our family. And we pray for you, and we believe God for you. 